All right, why well, use Microsoft Paint to draw schematics? I'll probably take some heat from the internet for making this video, but we're going to do it anyway. One, it's free, it's easy, it's simple, it works, okay? I get it. There are times you want to use tools like LT Spice when you can simulate your circuits. There are times you want to use Eagle Cat or something where you want to take your product and send it off and get a circuit board made from it. There are other times where you just want a simple little picture to post online to maybe show your friends or get feedback or to show the work you've done, okay? All right, let's not confuse the simplicity of the tool with what it's capable of doing. If you'll see here, this is the power supply schematic and the amplifier schematic for the single-ended 807 amplifier I built on my channel a few years back. Every bit of this was drawn using Microsoft Paint. All the drawings, all the lettering, every bit of it. I posted these online. People can print them off. They're really easy to follow and copy, and they work great. If this is what you're looking for, let's follow along. Okay, one thing that is very helpful to have in using Microsoft Paint is the ability to do screenshots or screen snippets. Now, Windows comes with a snippet tool. It's fairly limited in capability. I use this one called Greenshot. Um, another good example would be Snagit by TechSmith. This one's free, this uh, Greenshot, but let me show you what it can do. Okay, let's use the, the snipping tool. So I click down here, I click on this screenshot. It brings me up Capture Region, and let's say I'm just going to steal... Oh, let's just steal this schematic right here and throw it up on our... Um, so you get that, you can say copy to clipboard. Then I can come over here and I just hit Control-V. And all of a sudden now I have a schematic in here to play with. I can scale this if I choose to. Um, if I don't like that, I can hit the Control-Z button, Control-V it again. Um, let's say I want to add a logo to this. Um, here's a picture of my logo. There again, I could just go grab this little tool capture region. So this is how you go and uh, I'll say plagiarize <laughs> to use the word loosely. Um, it's where you get your content from. Okay, quickly. I've already got a paint going with this. Okay, I made you a little cheat sheet up here with control Z is undo, control X is cut, control V is paste, control C is copy. Give you a great example. If I didn't like this right now, I could hit control X and it is gone. I wanted it right back, I could hit Control V and I pasted it and right back it comes, okay? Um, you hold down the control with your left little pinky and use your first index finger to move across and use these keys and it saves you time from having to go up here over and over. So let's say we want to do some work on this schematic but it's kind of small. Um, you can come up here and click View, zoom in, make it much larger and you go back to Home then and you have all your functions. Let's say I wanted to identify this rectifier right here and I wanted to click the A button up here for alphabet. And I come here and I want to type in, let's say, 5U4. But that 5U4 is not exactly where I want it. I can move my cursor around now until I get it just exactly the right spot. And then when I let go, if you'll notice, sometimes it moved just a little bit. It's because the font is rendering on the page. You'll get used to that and you'll learn which fonts move and which direction and, uh, and how to work with those. But as you can see here, it was that easy to add that to it. Okay, in Windows Explorer, if you right-click on a file and then just click Edit, if your default photo editor is Paint, it will pop right up. And then let's zoom in on this. It's kind of small for us to be working with, so we're going to get it larger here. And then let's look. Oh, gosh, I really don't want this, uh, this logo here in the middle of my picture right now while I'm trying to work on it. So what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll click on the Select button, and I'll just highlight this selection. I've got a couple options right now, okay, now that it's highlighted. One, if this color, too, matches the background of what you're working with in white, you can simply hit the Delete button on your keyboard, and that is gone at this point. Now, what if I wanted it back? Control-Z, undo, okay? And let's say instead of deleting it, I wanted to move it, okay, and I just use the middle wheel on my mouse to scroll down a little bit. Once it's selected and you've got the four arrow button here, you can just drag this down and put it out of the way wherever you want, okay, and then we're back to working on our schematic. It's still down here. All right, so let's start talking about moving components around and adding things and whatnot, okay. Well, this is part of a schematic for something that I'm not ready to reveal yet. It's about half the power supply. And I intentionally erased the other half so I would have some room here to work with. 
But let's um let's use this select button and let's just say, hmm, maybe I want to add in another capacitor, okay? So I select it, I hit control C, then I hit control V. I've got another capacitor here. And let's say I wanted to add it in somewhere. I don't know, maybe right along in here, okay? Um, I could then come along and I can use the little line key here and I usually select about this size of line and you just kind of get on top of the existing line here. Oop, wrong size, but Control Z will solve that. Um, get on top of this line right here and I can extend my, my bus rail here on out wherever I want it, okay? And then if I want to draw down from here, I do so. And then the way I add these little boxes right here is I literally come up here and I use this little fill box. But you got to make sure the fill is on solid color. And then I will do a little bitty, um, just a little bitty box there. And because I had color 2 here on white, if you'll notice my fill was white. So I will have to come over here and change my color 2 back to um, black here if that's what I want. And now I've got a black little dot. And you'll learn to play around and get them the right size as you do little connectors or whatnot. But just remember to put your color two back if you're going to go do selecting and cutting and pasting. Um, oh yeah, we were going to finish drawing out this line here. And let's say I wanted this to connect all the way up right here to this point. And then I wanted to come along here and grab this rail and run it on out as well. Uh, and let's grab this rail. Whoops, didn't grab it in the right location. You just learn to control C, control V a whole lot as you go through this, okay? And usually the reason I use these little um, dots is to indicate a connection. And where there's not a dot like this, there would not be a connection. And I'm still not happy with my little, uh, my little square there. And I'll fill that in again, black. And still not happy with it. There we go. Okay, we're getting there. You get the idea. Um, sometimes you just have to play with this. And oh, what if I didn't want this right here? What if I wanted a resistor? Well, let's go back to select. Let's grab another resistor here. Control C, Control V. It throws it up in the left hand corner. I could then come over here and just throw this right on top. And look at that. I now have a new C R C section. And let's say I wanted to add some lettering and I wanted to make this lettering red. And then I wanted to call this part over here. Um, ooh, and that's a great big font. Let's change it down to like an eight first. Get it where I want it. Oops. Let me go back on my font and change color one. I'm sorry. B plus plus plus. And maybe we would say right channel. Okay. I could then grab this, drag it to exactly where I wanted. Boom. There we go. It's that simple. If you'll just remember how powerful select is. So let's say at the end of the day here, for whatever reason, I wanted to chop all this off right here. I could come in here. Oops, why did it do that? Because I didn't have my color on the background here. My second color white it filled in the background. I could just chop it all off right there if that's where I wanted my schematic to end at. Right there. Um, you use this select, remember? Hmm, I put that here. I didn't, that's not where I wanted it. Grab the four box. Simple enough. Drag it to where you want it, okay? Oh, I want to put another one of those somewhere else. Control C, Control V. You've got another one up here. Let me drop one in right here. Now I'm starting to do things that don't make sense in a power supply. But anyway, you get the point. Simple little line here. Make sure it's this. Make sure the color is black. I could come along here, drop on top of this line, bring it straight over connect it right in. Don't forget you've also got an eraser button up here you could use if you just wanted to come over and remove a piece of wire like that right there. I've got a teeny little spot in here and, and my eraser is a little big. You can change the size of your eraser just like you do the other just like that and look I got rid of that little piece that was hanging out right there. Let's say oh back over here to select. Hmm. Don't like that there. I think I want to put it over here. Well that doesn't make sense. I can control Z it, move it back over here, and let's say, oops, I had the right and left channel interchanged, okay? Get this so that it's over here. I'm going to drag this now up here, come back over and select again, get it. Sometimes I will teach you something here. If you select something that's so small, and let me give an example, let's say I just select this 10H. 
Well, that's too small for me to ever get in here and get the four-way arrow box to pop up. And anything I do is just going to scale it and not actually move it. You'll learn to actually drag a box bigger than you need like this so that you actually get the four-way box here. And then you can move it wherever you want it and you can put your tin Henry right there. Besides, you don't like that? Hit the Control-Z. Hey, what if we want to move this inductor here somewhere else? Grab it, drag it, move it. Okay, it's that simple. Hmm, what if I wanted a resistor back where I had that inductor at? All right, control C, control V. I bring this down here. Okay, now I might have to fill in a little bit right there again, use the solid line, and just come back here and get on top of that and move straight over. And there we go, we're filled back in again. What if I don't like this 27K and I want to erase it? I've got multiple options. I can use the select button here, remember? hit delete I could have also came up here hit the eraser and came along and deleted you know I will tell you some of the limitations of using paint one in the lettering let me give you an example here let's say I want to make something here that said this is blue glows next prototype okay one you notice how it's squishing it up you can drag it out here two uh, you can come back in here and correct things, but like there's no option here in Paint to center this text. I can bold it if I want, but there's no option to center it. There's also no infinite rotation axis on um, turning components. Let me give you an example. Let's say I want to take this component right here, and I want to rotate it. So I'm going to control it, copy it. Okay, I want one like this, but I don't, I want one going uh, vertical instead of horizontal, right? You don't have one of those little green axis balls that you can grab and turn this, but you can take the component and come up here and rotate, and you can kind of say rotate right 90 or, or, or um, rotate left 90, and you could get your component, and looky there, slide it right in, and it fits right there. Thanks to one of my viewers for that tip, by the way. Let's do a few things that may be just a little more advanced. Let's go to view and zoom out, okay? And let's say I want to go back over here. Let's say first I want to get rid of this. So I highlight it, I hit my delete button, right? I want to get rid of this, highlight, delete button. What if, what if I don't like where this whole thing is centered on my page, right? Well, just remember, you can come over here and select the entire whole thing. Move it wherever you want. You know, you're not limited to any one component. Let's get rid of that. Now, let's go grab a component or something. Let's say I don't like this front end right here, okay? I'm going to get rid of it. And let's say I don't like this. I can get rid of it. Keep in mind, I just keep using uh, I keep using my select here as an eraser until I get rid of everything I, I don't like about this front end. And let's just say we chop it off, something like that, okay? Got a little tail hanging right there I want to get rid of. So we've done that, okay? Let's say I want to go over here now and grab something off of this other... So this might so this is off a web page. You could grab any piece off of any website anywhere. And let's say I want to select this front end now. Um, I'm going to screenshot that. I'm going to copy to clipboard. I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click paste. Now all of a sudden I'm bringing that into my schematic here. And look at that. I now have a whole new front end. I think you're starting to get the idea now that this is a fairly powerful tool that you can use to do lots of things with if you if you so chose. A tip or two I'll leave you with here as we're wrapping this up. Um, sometimes I like to draw lines like this completely all the way to the end of where I'm going to need them. Then I come back and I add my components on top of them. So I would cut, paste this. And I would just move it on top of this wire. It's easier than adding the components and then trying to draw all the little wires later, okay? Okay, another tip. If you need symbols to use in your creation of, elect of schematics with paint, just come in here and Google and type schematic symbols. Or you could say four, you know, two schematic symbols or whatnot. Hit enter. Oops. Hit enter. Come up here to images. There you go. Tons of them. Tons and tons and tons and tons. Let's say I wanted to use one off of this page. Okay, up here is a fixed and a variable resistor. Let's say I want to use a variable resistor. I come over here, I use my little snipping tool. I would come up here then. I'm going to use this variable one right here. I'm going to go grab it like that. Copy to clipboard, minimize this. Control V. I've now got it on my page here, but I need to rotate it because I want to use it. 
I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to roll it right in. I'm going to draw some new lines on either end to intersect that. I now have a new symbol in here. There's lots on the internet to use. The best, the best advice I can give you on learning to use paint is to sit down for an hour or two and do it. it it's how you will learn. You will learn quickly these control C, control V, cutting and pasting, selecting, moving, so on and so forth. And you will get, you will get fast at this before you know it. I can draw a schematic with paint just about as fast as I can with a pen and paper now. And it turns out much better. And if I need to erase something, it's so much easier than, than on an actual pen and paper. So, all right, I'm going to call this a wrap. Hope you guys learned something. I had fun making it. And maybe you guys learned a little bit about a project I've got in the works now. So stay tuned for more. Thanks, everybody.